In the past month, Flutterflow has launched several exciting updates for you, some of which you've been eagerly waiting for. So without wasting any more time, let's dive in. First up, we have enhanced the Google Maps widget, now allowing you to personalize your map markers with your custom on-brand images. To utilize this feature, simply add a Google Maps widget to your page and the properties panel will be open on the right. Now find the marker icon setting and set it to image. You can set to a network URL or an asset image. Now simply add the relevant URL or upload the desired icon and that's it. Next we have my favorite feature which is setting variables to animation values. Here's a cool example of a menu interaction that uses this variable animation values and other Flutterflow widgets to build this fun effect. Consider this scenario. You want to animate the entries of a list view widget and have each item appear sequentially after a certain delay. Let's assume that each animation duration is around 600 milliseconds. Now, here's how it will work. Let's first set up the list view with some text items. Now, on your on-page load animation properties, we will combine a fade in and slide in animation. This will ensure that the text elements are faded in first and then slide it into the desired position. By default, all items will appear simultaneously, but we can stagger the entry by modifying the delay for each item. We're going to be using this formula index multiplied by 600, where 600 is the duration for each animation. This means that for the item at zeroth index, the delay is 600 multiplied by zero, which is zero milliseconds. So it starts immediately. For the item at index one, the delay is 600 multiplied by one, which is 600 milliseconds. So it starts after the first item's animation completes. Now insert this formula to your code expression and set it to your delay field. This logic ensures that each item begins its animation after the previous item has finished its animation. So it creates a nice smooth sequential flow. We've also released another lifesaver feature, which is data type from JSON. Have you ever found it difficult to create a long list of custom data types to match the backend API responses? If you are dealing with more than five or 10 custom data types, it can get time consuming very soon. Flutterflow now simplifies this for you. If you already have an example backend API response from your backend team or from the API provider, you can start using this feature right away. Simply go to the data types tab and click on the specified icon. This allows you to paste the example and API response and within a few seconds, Flutterflow creates all the custom data types for you. You might also notice that certain data types are referring to other custom data types, which was automatically detected by Flutterflow. Now you can go ahead and modify or edit these custom data types in the future in case the structure has any minor changes. Along with these major updates, we have also released some smaller updates last month, like safe area for containers. Now you can add safe area to your containers to ensure content is visible around device specific obstructions like notches or rounded corners. For example, consider this map screen with a bottom sheet card at the bottom. Without a safe area, the card will be obstructed by the notch or the rounded corner. Now I'm enabling safe area for this container and now you can see it can avoid these hardware elements and display the elements properly. We've also enhanced the UX for color pickers across the platform. You can now clear colors more efficiently. Just click on this icon and in one step, the colors will be reset. Next, we have a branching update. Flutterflow now allows you to rename branches after they have been created, allowing you to manage branches better. This can be useful in scenarios where the initial names no longer reflect the purpose of the branch. So renaming can maintain clarity and also ensure that the branch names align with the functions. Next is an update for users building for Android. Since Android 8, adaptive icons are required, which includes a foreground icon and a background icon. Without this capability, your launcher icons might not display properly. So now Flutterflow allows you to add both the background icon and foreground icon allowing you to comply with these guidelines and making sure that your launcher icons look great in all Android devices and launcher themes. 
Last but not least, have you ever found an issue where you had to build a component with no background color and it has caused all the text to blend in with the canvas background color? Well, it might be the intended text color, but it makes it difficult for you to design the component further. Previously, a common workaround would have been to add a temporary background color to the container, but not anymore. Now you can change the canvas color to either provide a contrasting backdrop or match the expected background color, allowing you to view your pages or components better. And that's all the updates for me. All the relevant documentation is available at docs.flutterflow.io. We have some really exciting stuff planned for you in June. So stay tuned and happy building.